Welcome to an episode of Rooftop Conversations. So in 2012, I actually entered into an engineering school, as everyone has known from this show, and we had to take this placement test. And granted, I'm super nervous. I'm just coming off of high school. I'm awkward as hell. And then I meet this super <laughs> cool girl waiting online as I'm waiting to take my placement <laughs> exam. And I'm just like, wait, this girl is just like someone who gives me like, once again, right, common theme in my show is good vibes and good personality. And those are the people that I'm really attracted to and drawn to. And that my next guest is someone who isn't who meets who isn't like that exception, right? Someone who I instantly vibe with the moment I saw her, and I remember telling her, "I can see us being really good friends throughout <laughs> college." So I am so pleased to have my friend Gio Chavez come on the show today, and thank you so much, Gio. Um, I feel like you're gonna have to introduce yourself because you're honestly <laughs> one of like the coolest, smartest, most accomplished people that I know. So I'd love for you to introduce yourself. So just like tell people what you do, like who you are, where you're from, and all of that. So hey, May, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be on the show. Super excited. Um, so like you said, we met um, back in placement test for NYU Poly. I actually transferred out of there and then went to City College because low-key NYU Poly is hella expensive, and I was not trying to graduate with a lot of debt. Um, I am a child of immigrants. I was actually an immigrant myself. I was born in Ecuador, um, raised there until I was like about four, then I moved here, and currently I am living in Cali because I got a job at an aerospace company after graduation. So, Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and like... Um yeah, we did meet at a placement test, and yeah, I agree. NYU is super expensive. I'm still paying off for those loans, and on top of that, I also have my law school loans now, so I'm swimming yeah. in debt. <laughs> it's the worst. Uh, you made the right choice, actually, if anything. Um, <laughs> So I'd love to say, so you did mention that you are a child of immigrants and you're also an immigrant yourself from Ecuador. So I would love to hear, how was it like growing up in Brooklyn? You're from Brooklyn, New York, like I am. And how was it like mm -hmm. growing up in, um, in, in Brooklyn and as like a child of immigrants, as an immigrant? And like, how did you balance out like those challenges of adapting to a new country, a new land, and also just like your, like, your, your life experiences on that end? So for me, it was me growing up. I lived a place in Brooklyn where I lived is um, in Williamsburg, and before it was gentrified, like at least the area where I'm at, it's like a lot of Dominicans, a lot of Latinos. So it's like that always felt very comforting. Like I would go, you know, to La Vega, and I can speak Spanish to them and things like that. And even when I came, you know, like I I didn't know any English, but I picked it up very quickly. Like my mom would tell me, she's like, like the first day that I went to school, they were like, oh, like your child, like she's never spoken like English. Like, are you sure? Like, and because school was always like very, very like natural for me and very easy and kind of like that, so it helped. But um, one of the hardest parts I would say is also because you're the eldest, you know, your parents kind of expect a lot from you, especially because they're, you know, they're immigrants themselves. They wanted a better life. That's what the whole reason why they came here, you know? So pretty much, you know, like any paperwork and stuff that I was the one that spoke the most English, like I would have to do, which I, mean, I know for a fact that you did the same thing, you know, things like that. Um, and it was a lot of just, you know, kind of adjusting. I would always travel like back and forth with my family to Ecuador once we got our citizenship and stuff. So I'm very like in tune with like my family, um, my mom's family that's in Ecuador, you know, my culture, like I love Ecuadorian food, like I speak Spanish all the time. Like, I wish there were more people here that I would speak Spanish with because it just, it just makes me so excited and, you know, things like that. Like, I'm very, very proud of my culture and everything. So, it's like, I personally love being an immigrant. And whenever I meet, like, other immigrants, like, we're so excited and we share, like, experiences. And it's, just, it's really, really dope. And I just, I love it. Honestly, that story about you having to do all the paperwork is literally, <laughs> I'm not an immigrant myself. I was born here, but I am a daughter of immigrants. And... I had to do paperwork, like, complex, like, government stuff and complex, like, I don't know, like, stuff, like, there were words, like, I didn't even know as an eight-year-old oh, that I was sure, still humming my, honestly, I'm, like, sitting there, like, um, I guess this is what this means, like, I'm not sure, and I think that's, like, like I hope I'm doing it right, I hope, yeah, like, I don't want to get my parents arrested, like, oh, my God, and, yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's interesting, because I always tell people, I'm, like, I, yes, I'm a, like, I'm a professional attorney, but, like, a lot of my editing skills wasn't through law school or through my professional work. It was literally, I would help my parents edit papers and things like that. So, oh, it's, dude, <laughs> you're right, like, I sit there. To this day, because she's a teacher, so her English, I was like, my mom actually learned English here and everything. To this day, she'll send me things. She's like, can you just edit this for me and then send it back to me? 
me too. Oh, my mom is also a teacher and makes me edit every email, every document before she sends it. And I think it is like part of the immigrant experience, especially like being a New Yorker immigrant. Like you really have to like mm-hmm. hustle yourself, but you also yeah. have to hustle and help your parents hustle, which is like, I think with every immigrant or child of immigrants I've ever spoken to, this is like the common theme. It's like not, at first I was like, am I the only one that had to go through this? No, it's apparently like, it's like everyone lived the same childhood. Um, so you did mention that like Williamsburg, you grew up in Williamsburg. And I mean, I'm, I, I grew up kind of like the neighborhood next to Williamsburg. I grew up in downtown. And like, I think both of us can agree that these two neighborhoods have rapidly <laughs> gentrified over the past, yeah. like, I know. It doesn't even look the same. Like, every time I go there, I'm like, this isn't what it looked like when I was growing up. Like, Yeah, well, what? that was like a new building. I'm like, that was not there before. <laughs> I've been here before. I was like, huh? Like, this is not, what? Like, this does not look like how I, used, how I was used mm-hmm. to seeing Brooklyn growing up. So, like, I'd love to hear from your words, like, especially as someone who, like, like, at the end of the day, like, um, Ecuador and, I, and Brooklyn are your two homes. And I feel like mm-hmm. I'd love to hear, like, what your thoughts were about that, especially with, like, this whole development thing. Like, your honest truth on it. Like, how do you feel about everything coming in? Honestly, it's, like, the way that I always saw it, like, even my parents have been in the same building. We moved from the sixth floor to the third floor. and We've been there, like, probably, like, what, 20-plus years, like, literally since, you know, I came to the U.S. You know, and we have a two-bedroom, and it's affordable because we got it way back when. But we know as soon as we leave, you know, that thing is just going to skyrocket. And... Even now, like, when I would, like, see, like, all the, like, the buildings, like, coming up and stuff, like, I would look, I was like, yo, these are really nice. And I'm like, yo, that looks hella unaffordable. Like, I don't think that I'm going to be living in one of those. And I see, like, little balconies and stuff. And I'm just like, yo, that looks really nice. And I'm like, there's no, that's at least, like, 2000 for, like, a studio apartment, you know? So, it's, like, that I, always kind of like that to me. Yeah, no, I, like, I mean, I'm still here in, in New York, and I live at home with family still because I personally can't even afford... Like, okay, like, you could see on the skyline, like, there's different buildings around. These are all mm-hmm. new developments that I personally can't afford, like you said, right? A studio here is, like, 2000 3000 per month. I'm like, at this point, might as well just go get a house somewhere else in the suburbs. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's how high the price for no reason. <laughs> for no like, reason. This is the neighborhood where I grew up, and this is the neighborhood where all the immigrants came because nobody else wanted to live here. And they made it a home, and they made it nice, and then now all of a sudden, you, you know, you have these developers come in and say, hey, this is a good place to live. It's by the waterfront. It's very convenient. It's close to, you know, 15 minutes away from Manhattan. You know what? Let's develop here. And then you have a bunch yeah. of displaced people that are kicked out because they can't afford the rent anymore. Yeah, 100%. It's like, it's always like immigrant communities, and these, it's not even just like, oh, this is just like a place with a nice, a waterfront with a nice view, right? It's like you said, people who have come here from their home countries with their cultures and have started a new life here, but also like have shared like, st- like you know, customs and traditions and food and everything from where they were from and kind of makes, and it kind of makes that like really unique about the neighborhood, really unique about like New York, at least like how you and I grew up in New York. I don't know how it is now, yeah, yeah. but like how you and I grew up in New York, it was very cultural, a lot, it was like, you know, homey, it was very community like based oriented, mm-hmm. no matter like, you know, whether you're, from this country or that country, I think, like, most immigrants, since like, like, immigrants of color can all, like, kind of relate to this mm-hmm. story and things like that. And it's kind of sad to see, like, New York be such a different place. And um, it's something that I know I'm personally trying to work on with, like, my legal and professional career as well. But shifting gears, <laughs> I could talk <laughs> Brooklyn all day. I think with every Brooklyn night, it's, like, we have the same story and the same, like, mm-hmm. like you know, kind of like annoyances with New York right now. <laughs> but I would love to hear. So you went to NYU Poly or now it's known as NYU Standard School of Engineering. And I would love to hear like what was your motivation for a career in engineering and specifically mechanical mm-hmm. engineering, which is what you majored in when I met you. Yeah. So I have like I mentioned before, I was always good at school. Um and I was always particularly good at math. So uh, when I was in high school, I think it was like, it was junior year when you're trying, like, trying to figure out like, okay, what do you want to study? Like you have to start applying to colleges and stuff like that. I was in my calculus class and my professor, shout out, you know, to Mr. Bolus, he was actually a civil engineer. And he would ask me, he was like, hey, you know, like, what are you planning on studying in college? And I told him, I was like, well, I'm kind of good at math, I'm good at numbers, I was like, maybe accounting. And he showed up with me, like, no offense to any accounting majors or anything out there, he's like, you could learn that from a book. He was like, you are not doing accounting. And I just looked at him like, yo, you just kind of like low-key shit on my whole plan right now. 
And he was like, dude, he was like, look into engineering. And low key, I think because of the whole immigrant thing and because like like me, like most of my cousins like kind of didn't go to college and like my parents, like they went in Ecuador. So it was like, it was very different growing up. Like I was pretty much kind of like, at least the way that I saw it, it was my, I was the first experience to go through the whole process, like high school into college and trying to figure out what I wanted. You know, and he told me that look into engineering. And I looked it up and I started going through all of them and they were like, chemical engineer i was like i hate chemistry that was not, not for me and then i was like hey, like civil engineer i was like you know let me look at what he does with civil engineering and i was like those bridges and rules i was like that sounds it's interesting but kind of boring and then i arrived on mechanical and because it was like very math based physics based and it was so broad i was like this looks like fun you know i was like i could literally go into working on cars i can work on planes i can work on like you know like hvac which is low-key very very boring which i wouldn't do but it was like it gave me the option of you know like going different ways while still doing engineering. So I was like, I always, like, whenever, like, anyone asks me the engineering thing, I always bring on Mr. Bolas from Brooklyn Tech because he was the one that told me, he's like, you are way too good for accounting. He's like, go into engineering. And literally, like, it stuck from there. No, that's awesome. Like, I can't, like, it's so great that you have such, like, a really supportive teacher that actually, like, was like, hey, you can do this. You're much mm-hmm. better than this. Not, but, but, yeah, but, you know, like, not to downplay accounts, but, like, you can shoot for the stars and you can go further. So, like, that's amazing. I wish I had teachers like that. Like, teachers used to play me all the time. Like, I don't, like, I feel like I always had teachers that just didn't like me. And, but anyway, um, so I'm like, yeah. Um, so, like, I would love to hear, like, so you did say you started at NYU and then decided to go to City College uptown because of financial reasons and things like that. So, I'd love to hear, you know, how was that transition like to transfer to another school um, especially as an engineering stu- student, when you already have, like, all these, like, requirements and prereqs, mm-hmm. and engineering is already hard <laughs> enough, and then to have to transfer and start, like, a new, like, curriculum, I'm sure it's difficult. So I'd love to hear, like, what was that experience, like, as a transfer student, um, like, especially a transfer student in engineering? Mm-hmm. So it was extremely difficult, dude. Like, first off, it was, I, because I transferred in, I didn't start with, like, all the other freshmen. So, like, everyone had their little groups, everyone had their friends, and, like, their support systems, which in college is, like, is very, very essential. You know? So I got there, and I kind of would literally just kind of go to my classes and go home, go to my classes, go home. Like, I wouldn't really, like, even hang out, especially because it was so far. It was, like, an hour and change away from my house. So, you know, like, I didn't want to be there longer than I had to be. You know, and I would get there, and to be honest, like, I, I finished all, like, my liberal class, art classes, like, first, and, like, my, I didn't even have to take English, I transferred in, they accepted those credits, but because I wasn't sure which engineering courses would transfer, I got all liberals out the way, which made the next few years very difficult, because it was straight up, like, just all physics, chemistry, like, every hard class that you could take, I have to take all in the same semester. So it was very, like, very lonely, too, and, like, I could see the differences between going to, like, a public school and a private school. Like, at least, like, like you couldn't bring snacks into the library at City College. Everyone did regardless, but it, it was very different. And it was like, you see the differences in the resources that are offered to you, you know? And I kind of had to, like, go out of my way to kind of find, um, like, kind of a support system, which I did eventually find. I found it in this, actually, um, it's a Latino club, is La Esa Shep. So, like, that was kind of, and I found it low-key, I think, in, like, technically year, like, four of my fifth year at City College. It took me seven years to graduate college total. All right, two years at NYU Poly and then five years, which was basically starting from scratch because most mechanical engineers do five years, you know? So once I found them, it kind of became a little easier for me because I had a support system. You know, I had people who, um, low-key, a lot of them were also transfer students from, like, different colleges, other community colleges, other, um, you know, private schools. So it, it kind of made me feel less alone. You know, and because they were in it, they understood they're also immigrants, they're also Latinos, you know, they're also in the STEM programs. You know, it was very comforting to know, it was like, shit, like, all right, you guys are struggling just as much as I'm struggling, you know, and let's help each other out. You know, there were other mechanical engineers there, there were some civil engineers, you know, chemical engineers that would help me with, like, the chemistry classes that I was taking because Loki, those are a struggle. Like, I really do, I'm really bad at chemistry, you know? So, um, that was, like, one of those, and, you know, my advisor also, like, she was very, very helpful. Like, she tried to, like, get me as many credits as I possibly could, you know, just so that I wouldn't have to take many classes, and she would always, every year, at, well, not every year, every semester, I had an issue registering for classes, so I became, like, super, super buddy-buddy with her. She, I wouldn't even go to my regular advisor. She was, like, the head of the entire department, and I would go to her, and she would, like, remove my holes. She would tell me what to do. Like, she, oh, I freaking love her. Her name is Debbie. She's, like, so, she's so amazing. I love her. 
Yeah, no, definitely. And like you mentioned those like differences of like the different challenges that you as a transfer student had had to face, especially coming from a private school like NYU where, I mean, I'm going to say we had resources. The amount of money we paid, we, sh we technically had resources. Yeah. Were they helpful? <laughs> we don't really know. That's up to the people to decide. Yeah. Um, but, and then, then you mentioned like going to an, a public school in New York City, which may have not had the same amount of resources as we've seen in private school. So it's interesting to see. Like I, I didn't even know that there were the, the I mean, I kind of figured that there were differences, but I didn't know how stark those differences were. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting to hear from your perspective that they were definitely different. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear like uh, from your experiences, like how can we like better support transfer students? Because I feel like when people talk about admissions, when people talk about college help, no one really kind of talks about transfer students in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And transfer students, like, like you said, right, it's really common, right? People transferring from another school to, an, like, mm -hmm. from one four-year to another, people who, who just came in from a community college, people who, want, who took a gap year and, like, came back. So I'd love to hear, like, how can we, well, when I say we, I mean, like, the systems around us and, of mm -hmm. course, like, the higher education system better support transfer students. So to me, I think one of the best things that you could probably do is sort of mentorship programs, just because, like, like you, you're, you're in this entirely different place. You know, you don't know anybody there. You don't know what the clubs there are. You don't even know, like, where some of the buildings are, you know, some of the classes. I would literally, like, before the first day of school and I had my schedule, I would go there, like, 30 minutes early so that I wouldn't get lost because, you know, I didn't know where anything was. And it's not like NYU Poly, NYU Poly was like one building, you know, like here, I have like a whole, technically like a little campus, so it's like I would have to go from like one building to the other, and I didn't know how it worked, and it's like even numbers are like one side of the building, odd numbers are on like the other side, so it's like, you know, it's a lot, of, it can become easily like very overwhelming if you don't have someone to help you navigate through that, so at least like if you had like some type of buddy or like a mentorship, even if it's like just to literally show you around or tell you like, hey, where can I even go to get this program downloaded on my laptop? You know, like I wouldn't even know certain places. I would, I was, I was, I would always have to get someone to like accompany me to like go to certain things. You know, or it's like even like a little shorthand is like, oh, let's go to the tunnel. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that is. Like what? Like you know, explain it to me. You know, like I didn't start here from freshman year. You know, I don't have, you know, and you and you see it. Like, and it's also kind of like an outsider kind of perspective because it's like you see all. Even if you meet someone in class. Like, let's say, you know, like, you talk to them, whatever, you, like, as soon as you leave class, like, they'll go with their friends, so it's like, you know, maybe we're friends for that class kind of thing, you know, which does help, but it's also, like, very, you know, it's very lonesome, it's very lonesome as a transfer student, Loki. No, I definitely, I, I can definitely see, because, like, it's like you're going to a new place where everyone, like you said, right, has already had all these connections, they already have their cliques kind of formed, mm -hmm. at least say their groups formed, and it's like you just want that support system, even if it's like a mentorship form or just, mm -hmm. like, in a less casual where you have someone to, like, okay, hey, like, let's, I'll take you around this and this and this. I'm sure, like, like at Poly, like, there's, like, a bunch of acronyms, right? There was, like, BTM, BMS, CBE, uh, MECGI, like, CS, and, like, yeah. SCS, and there was, like, like I, I I know what these mean. Like, my friends know what these mean. But, like, whenever I'm talking about this to, like, another person who didn't go to that school, they're like, what? What's a, what's a BCM? Like, and I'm just like, what's a BMS? And I'm like, oh, that's, that's the major. So it's like, every school has their language. It's just, like, makes it much easier for you to acclimate to it if you had someone there for you. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, on the topic of mentorship, you mentioned SHEP, right, which is the Society of, I think I'm going to mess this up. Is it the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, my friend yeah. was in chef. My friend was in chef, and that's how I. <laughs> that's how I know the acronym. Uh, so that's how I remember. Like, okay. So you. Um, so you. You. You join chef at City College, which is a basically um, a, an affinity group for Hispanic engineers and engineering mm -hmm. majors. Right. That's from guessing. Okay. Yeah. And so I'd love to hear like. I know for a lot of people, especially first generation students, especially students of color, groups like those are really beneficial in helping your experiences in a school, like an engineering school, or even for like me, like being in law school and going to an affinity mm -hmm. group like that, definitely made it much easier for me to like fit in with the culture. Um, and you know, engineering school is overwhelmingly male. It's like overwhelmingly white with like mm -hmm. some Asian students. And so I would love to hear like, what were your experiences like in both your academic career at both NYU Poly, City College, and then your professional career now? How was that like um, being like a woman of color, especially like a Latina woman in mechanical engineering? Like how was that experience like? And like what were the challenges you faced? So it, 
in school, like like you said, it's some entirely male dominated field. Um, so every single class that I was in, I can count the number of women that were there on like one hand, like low key. And it's and even more like the higher up the classes got, the less women that you would see. Like I took an aerospace class. And I was literally the only girl there. And the professor made it a thing to, like, point it out to me, too. He, he looked around. He was like, oh, I usually have, like, two or three. He's like, and then he looked at me. He's like, you're the only girl in my class this, this semester. And I was like, and then everyone was, like, staring at me. And I was like, dude, I was like, I know I, I, I knew I was going to be, like, one of two. But the fact that I was the only one, it was like I knew he was going to be paying, you know, special attention to, like, what I was doing. And I knew that I had to kind of, you know, you always have to work harder when you're a minority, when you're a woman of color, when, you know, you always have to work twice as hard to get, you know, recognized half as much, you know, it's like, it's a sad reality of it, but that's how things are, you know, and, but that, to be honest, never really bothered me, it just kind of made me want to, like, excel more, like, prove myself more, you know, and then now at work, it's like, I, I'm a manufacturing engineer, you know, that is my position, and within my group, I am the youngest, actually, me and this one other, one other guy, we're the same age, but I'm the youngest, and all the, uh, we have three women engineers, all right? And one of them works for, like, a different different kind of, like, organization. Another one, she just she does, like, processes, and I'm the only one that's, like, on the floor and stuff. And it's, like, even, like, then, like, they would, like, everyone tells me, like, oh, my God, like, you're so young and you know a lot and you're very, like, you're eager to learn. And I'm, like, well, I, one, I enjoy, like, the work that I do, you know, and two, and it's, like, I know that I have to, you know, work hard, you know, and, I, and even, like, once you get – the one thing that I don't like is, like, a lot of politics stuff and a lot of, like, connections and stuff. And I'm, like, it is so annoying because it's, like, I understand that that's how the world works, but it's, like, it shouldn't be that way. You know, it's, like, I shouldn't be seen talking to this person because then, you know, like, they're going to think that you guys are, you know, you have the same work ethic and it's going to reflect badly on you. And I'm, like, you know, like, that's not fair, you know. Or it's, like, somebody messes up and it's, like, they have a safety net underneath them, you know. Like, things like that, which sucks because I know, you know, if I mess up, I'm I'm not going to have the same opportunity. Like, I'm kind of like a one and done kind of thing, you know. So I have to struggle and I have to make sure that I learn as much as I can in as fast as time as I can so that I can, you know, progress. Like, I would like to eventually in my job be a sort of technical lead. Like, I want, I don't want to do management. I don't want to do anything. I want to be technical. I want, like, something goes wrong. Is that, oh, my God, I called Gio down here. Like, she needs to tell us, like, is this acceptable? Is this not acceptable? How do we fix it? Like, that's what I want, you know. And, you know, especially as a woman, like, that would be so badass, too. Like, there's this one woman, too, at work. Like, she's like that. I just look at I admire her so much. I'm like, I want to be you, dude. Like, I really want to do what you're doing. No, definitely. I think that's something, like, I really admire about you, Gio. Like, from, like, the, the get-go and just, like, even after you left NYU, I just saw how hard you work and how determined you are as a person. And, like, you get things done, which I, like, highly respect. Like, I wish I had that work ethic because, like, I'm here, like, struggling. My, my life is a mess, clearly. But, like, you really get things done. And I, I do agree. I think the unfortunate reality, especially for women, especially for women of color, and especially for, like, black and brown women, it's, like, and, like, I can't even relate to those experiences as an Asian woman. So that's something, like, I acknowledge as well, where it's, like, you have to work so, so hard to get, like, even half the credit. And, like, mm -hmm. especially in, like, fields where it's, like, overwhelmingly male, overwhelmingly white. And then, like, I think, I don't know how it is for engineering, but I've heard it's, like, similar where there are students who come in with, like, moms or dads or parents who, like, already have these engineering jobs lined up for them, like, mm -hmm. like, like, legacy students, and, like, that just makes oh, it, like, even, and you're, okay, you're, like, you're, like, it's, 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 it's a thing. There's, so, a, uh, there's a few at work, but I'm, like, at least, like, at least, like, I understand that, but it's, like, if you are, even if you are a legacy student, because everyone kind of does need help, and, you know, I understand that, but if you, if that is not the only thing about you, and you get there, and you, you, you haul ass, and you're trying to say, it's, like, hey, maybe I got in because of my mom, or my dad, or my sister, whatever the case may be, but, dude, I earned that position, then I'm, like, I'm fine with it, you know? It's, like, as long as you're not just getting a free ride because of your mommy or your daddy or whatever the case may be, you know? Uh, no, yeah, definitely. I think it's, like, one thing to, like, for someone to actually step up to the plate and, like, hey, I'm actually generally interested in this. I'm going to work really hard to mm -hmm. get there, too. And I know people in law school who are in that position where parents are lawyers, but they also, like, do work hard. But then mm -hmm. I also know the other side where it's, like, I'm just going to coast by and just see where yeah, it's going. Oh, and, like, God. I can't. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm like, the entitlement thing, like, it really gets to me because it's like, dude, I literally, like, I transferred school, like, I worked so hard to get my degree, I struggled like crazy, like, there were a lot of times where I didn't think I was even gonna, you know, get to it, and then to have someone who just literally just comes in and they get handed, like, a silver platter or something, it's like, dude, like, that's not okay, and it kind of demoralizes me and also diminishes all the hard work that I put into it. 
you know, like all the hard work that I put in to get to where I am, you know? Yeah, no, and it's like, it, it shouldn't have to be that way. Exactly like you said, mm -hmm. right? Like there's this politics thing, connections and all that. It shouldn't have to be that way. It's like, it shouldn't have to be that we depend on someone else to like, for the stablement or survival of our jobs while someone else gets to coast by, which is, like, super unfair. It's, like, really telling of, like, mm -hmm. how our society is, which kind of, like, really sucks. But it's, of course, things that hopefully now with everything that's going on, our things are changing. People are pushing for more reforms or at least, like, mm -hmm. a huge overhaul of the system in general. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for sharing that story. Like, I, like, I think, like, seeing, like, you tell me your story. I mean, seeing, like, I witnessed your story from the beginning and seeing mm -hmm. you now thriving, doing your thing, you're, like, working so hard, you got this amazing job in Cali, and I'm just, like, I'm so proud of her, like, that is, like, my girl right there, I, like, I knew she was gonna do it, like, I was, like, yes, like, when you told me you graduated, I was, like, yes, like, no, 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 I was just, like, I was, like, you know what, like, nah, I know people who took, like, six, seven years to graduate undergrad, too, but, like, but honestly, like, you got it done. Like, forget about the, the time it took. You got it done. I graduated college in three and a half years, and I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm literally, like, a struggle. So it doesn't even matter, like, <laughs> how fast you did. I tell people that all the time. People are like, oh, like, you know, like, I'm kind of embarrassed. I graduated so late. I'm like, listen, I graduated college early, and I'm struggling. So it does not even matter. Like, I know people who graduated college in, like, six, yeah. seven years, of course, thriving. I graduated college in three and a half. I'm, I'm here on my rooftop doing a YouTube show. I don't really think my life is that the motivation, the motivation, <laughs> the motivation right? <laughs> but I should think you're so, like, you mentioned now you're working in California, uh, you grew up in Williamsburg, and, like, I mean, I don't know how you feel. I have family in Cali, and I think that's a different world for me. Like, I personally can't live there. It is so too laid back for me, too chill. I don't know. But I'd love to hear, like, you know, because there's so, I mean, to me, they're different places. People might disagree, but I'd love to hear, like, how was that adjustment for you to, like, move all the way across the country and, like, be in Cali, and, like, how did you adapt to that, especially, like, coming from New York, right, where everyone's, like, gritty and, like, no one, no one talks to each other. People just, like, mind their own business. People, like, it's, it's, a, it's like, a culture in New York, and it's, like, fast-paced and things like that, but in Cali, everyone's, like, I don't know, chill. it's a chill, yeah, I don't know, it's too slow for me. So how did you make that adjustment, and how did you adapt to that? Well, um, first of the reason why I moved over here is, uh, for, for mechanical engineers, like, once you graduate, the main job that you kind of have in New York is doing HVAC, which is, like, heating, ventilation, and AC, which low-key is boring as hell. And I straight up knew, like, I was not going to do that. I was like, I don't want to do that. And I knew I wanted to work, like, in the aerospace industry. And, you know, aerospace, most of it is, like, you know, Florida, Texas, California. So I was like, all right, I don't, I kind of don't want to go to Florida because it's low-key kind of like a retirement thing. I was like, I never really liked the, the vibe and stuff. And then Texas, I was like, it's kind of too far south. I was like, I don't, I don't really, I don't know how I feel about that, you know, especially coming from New York. And then Cali, I was like, Cali, I've heard good things. The weather is, everyone talks about the weather. And I hate the cold. I've always hated the cold. So I thought, okay, like, you know, like, let me check it out. And then when I moved, so I knew, hands down, like, I wasn't going to stay in New York, like, from, from the get-go, you know? And then when I moved, like, literally all the aerospace companies are around here. Literally, like, within blocks of each other, like, a few miles from each other, like, they're all here, you know? So when I came here, one of the first things that threw me off is, like, their, trans their public transportation system here sucks. Especially, dude, compared to New York, like, New York, like, I never honestly complained about the train, because I was like, I can literally go all the way from the Bronx to freaking Coney Island in, like, a, you know, a few trains, and, like, I love that. I love that I can literally get on a train and go wherever I want, but here, it's like, everyone has to, like, drive somewhere. To this day, <laughs> mate, I moved here a little over a year ago. I do not have my driver's license yet. I'm Ubering to and from work every single day, legit. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Okay, because, like, I, what? Wait, I have a driver. I don't use my driver's license. I, I'm scared to drive. I have one, but, like, I don't use it. But, wait, really? Wait, oh, you my God, okay. You don't need a driver's license in New York. I, and do, you like, go, I yeah. I got the permit. I got the permit in okay, New York. Okay, got the permit. Okay. My permit is fine, too, so I got the permit. Okay. And I was, I was all flat. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the license. And then the whole pandemic happened, so I was like, all right, I guess not. I guess I'm going to just keep Ubering for now, you know? I feel you. Same thing. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I have a license. Like, I took the test. I passed it. I just have anxiety and I can't drive. Like, that's literally what my I problem guess. is. But it's yeah, hard because like here. 
And yeah, right? like, oh, I'm like, I'm behind the wheel, like, oh my god, I'm so scared, oh my god. Like, but like, okay, wow, like, so, yeah, Callie, I'm like, oh, yeah, I figured you would have to drive everywhere, because that's how, like, mm-hmm. the cousins get around, and my aunt gets around, and things like that. So that's interesting to hear that, like, you're like, well, I'm just going to Uber every day. Honestly, that's probably what I would <laughs> do too and Kelly. I, I still would not learn how to drive but like I, I'm, yeah, I'm going that. soon so that I can actually do stuff because you know the Ubers do get kind of pricey but for now yeah. I'm just straight over and just doing for work but it's like there's a lot of difference mainly the transportation is the thing that gets to me because I'm used to being very independent and getting around on my own and things like that mm-hmm. but also the it's true like I miss like the hustle and bustle of New York and that grinding kind of attitude where it's like you're always like even when you're walking you're power walking you're never just like strolling and all leisure and stuff like that I remember when I first moved here, because I, I had to buy, this is my, like, my first apartment, so I had to, like, buy a whole bunch of stuff. And I would go into a store, and, you know, in New York, as soon as you walk in, it's like, oh, how can I help you? Like, well, you need this? Like, this is that. I was like, you know, I got my stuff, whatever. And everyone there is just so, like, calm, and they're like, oh, you need help? All right, what do you need this? And everyone speaks so slowly. That is the one thing that gets to me. Oh, I cannot oh stand that. Oh, my God! My, okay, oh, my God, so. <laughs> I have this joke all the time, and, like, my cousin knows this. I mean, she doesn't listen to this. I, my cousin, like, me and my cousin don't really, like, watch her <laughs> stuff. But anyway, my cousin, I have this one cousin who's from Cali. For every word she says, I've already said a paragraph. I'm like, why do you talk so slow? Like, I, so not, like, no disrespect her. Like, not, no, yeah. but like, I'm just like, I'm just like, why? Like, I'm just like, what the, he-? like, I'm like, mm-hmm. rap, like, speed it up a little faster. Come on, a little oh, just faster. a little bit, dude. Just a little bit, yeah. Oh, my God. Even at the store, when I'll be checking out, like, they would take forever to scan it. And I'm just like, oh, my God, you would not survive in New York, dude. <laughs> the word. Like, I'm like, oh. Get, oh, my God. It was, it was, yeah, it gets to it gets <laughs> Oh my god! So how did you make that adjustment? Because I feel like seriously, I don't think I could like I I spent most of actually like my when I was growing up like most of my holidays and stuff and vacations in Cali because where my mom kind of grew up in a way like that's yeah. that's where she came, like she went to Cali like, she came to Cali when she came from Thailand so that was where she first kind of settled so like oh, nice. Cali is a uh, is a different world for me like I can't even survive there so I just want to know like how did you make that adjustment like you you like you know instead of like. Like, you know, how did you get used to, like, people's mannerisms? I don't know. Like, it's one of like, here. Like, how is that like? Like, <laughs> you, know you just get used to it? You just deal with it? <laughs> I, low-key, there's times where I have to code switch, dude. Which sucks. Because ah. I get, I, like, even like even at work, like, one of, one of my friends, like, he, he actually very cool me. He told me, he told me once, he was like, hey, there's some people at work that low-key, like, they, like, the way that you talk to them, they kind of don't like it. And I was like. What the hell you mean you don't like it? Like, I'm talking, like, I'm being professional. Really? Yeah. Like, I've been, dude, I've been told that work, too, is like, yo, you're very assertive. No, you're very bossy. I've been told I'm bossy. And I what? Them, like, Oh, no. Like, no, yeah. And that, to me, is just, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, everyone talks that way. And I'm, like, okay, all right. So, I have to kind of adjust, like, the way that I go about things. And, like, okay, I get it. People here are a little softer. So, I have to, like, tone it down a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's like I it sucks because I'm like dude if I get excited I love when people tell me that my New York accent is coming out like I love that that that's me really like, I love language so, I love it but, like, oh, God, that's like New York or, or, or they look at me and like oh what does that mean and I'm just like that's a New York thing like I get so I genuinely get so happy because I'm like I don't I like I like Cali I like living here because like you know the weather and this is where my job is like and stuff like that but yeah I'm like. New York is home, dude. I love, I love the way they talk. I, it's always going to be just a whole different vibe that I love. The reason why I got my job is because I have that New York hustle. Because you know, like I grind and I grind until like freaking got to where I am. You know? Yeah. I mean, no, I seriously, I agree. <laughs> that I do. You have to not gonna lie. Uh, definitely, I'm like okay. It sucks that like they said bossy. I would, I would have felt some type of way. I don't know. Maybe I, I was like I did a little, but I also straight up was like I immediately reacted. I was like it's not bossy, it's assertive. And then they just yes, like, yes, just that like, is New hey, York. I don't turn it down. <laughs> Honestly, New York is a culture. Like, I don't care what anyone... It's not a city. It's a culture. I think, like, the people who did... It it is. And I think, like, even when I go out of state, it's like you could kind of see I'm not from that state. It's like, she's not from here. Like, I I was in uh, Washington, D.C. two years ago. Like, so I, I, like, was interning there. And I, like, lived in... Because, you know, the rent in D.C. is high. I lived in Maryland. So, Maryland <laughs> and New York, it's like a different world. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I remember the, the story I always tell the difference, right, in New York. When you get hit on, we get catcalled, it's just like, like a, hey, hey, what's up? Like, you know, like, how you doing? Like, it's like very, like, you're back. Like, you, hey, oh, like, they know you're, like, you're, they know, you know you're, they're catcalling you, right? But over mm-hmm. there in Maryland, they'll do the, 
good morning, ma'am. How are you? And I'm like, okay, good. And I'm like, not to be mean, like, I didn't, you know, you got the mm-hmm. earphones and I'm just like, oh yeah, I know. How are you? And like thinking like, oh, maybe they need the time, maybe the directions, whatever. So I'm like, oh, like, do you need help? And they're like, oh, you look so beautiful, ma'am. I'm like, okay, like, I'm like, don't. Or like people, even like innocent things, right? Like I'll walk on the street, you know, like in New York, where you put the headphones on and you're like, like, no one, like, pays attention. You don't, like, people just, mm-hmm. you don't mind your business. People don't, like, people mind their business. You mind yours. And, like, no one talks to each other. And then, like, people will come up to me, like, oh, my God, I love your dress. Like, like random people. And I'm just, like, thank you. Like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> but I get having to, like, shift personalities. Cause, like, That's people so don't good. get it. When you're not, like, people, New Yorkers, like, if you're not from, in New York, like, people don't get it. And, like, Mm-hmm. But yeah, home is home. I agree. I, the winter sucks. I am jealous of you that you are in sunshine 24 hours. Okay, like, yeah, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, I heard it's bad in Cali right now. Like, here there's like a wind, but it is, it's getting colder now. And honestly, like in a couple more months, like this place is going to be freezing. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm like, I would rather be in like a hundred degree heat than like in, in the freezing cold. Like, I'm oh, like, New I'm York. Like, right? Sweating like crazy than being in the cold. I always say Yeah. Cold. It's coming up. The cold season's coming up, and I'm upset because COVID really ruined summer in New York. And you know, summer in New York oh. get lit, so I'm just like, why, really? I love you, I you, know, love. I, you know what I realized too, living in Cali, why summer is such a vibe in New York is because we only have it for a certain amount of time. Like, yeah, everyone, they go on hikes, they go to the beaches, they do whatever the hell they want because they have this nice weather all year round. And then in New York, it's like as soon as it gets hot, it's like every event is on. Every everything is free. The concerts, the piers. And I'm like, I love that vibe so much. And I was like, I can experience it now all year round. And then COVID hit, and I'm just like, so I'm I'm just not gonna experience a, a summer like at all. Wait, okay, wait. You have a point because I always was like, why the summer in New York hit much differently than like anything else? Because like I spent the summer in DC, and no disrespect to any of my Washingtonians <laughs> listening, because like I have a couple of friends from DC, but DC New- summers are nothing compared. New York, it's like everyone just comes out. I'm just like, why does it hit I, differently? Like it's because we're so used to the freaking cold. You can't do anything. So as soon as it gets nice, everyone is hanging out. There's barbecues. Everyone stays out all hours of the night. And because it's New York. And literally, the city does not sleep. I love summers in New York. I'm out with my friends all the time. We hang out till like early in the morning. We'll go get food, like literally like three, four in the morning. Like we know the munchie spots and stuff. Like it's it's amazing. I love it. I love summer. I love summer. I know. Oh my god, guys, that that that, that's probably the secret ingredient. It's like the repression. It's like you don't get it for like (laughs) nine, ten of the year, uh, ten ten months of the year, and then like the two, three months we have are like, yes, we're gonna put the the fashion comes out, the home, the part, yeah, the parties, the clubbing. Like oh, okay. I miss it because right now that's what I should be doing, but I'm not because yeah. of this pandemic. <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking about the pandemic, because I feel like this is now that's the question and the topic that everyone's talking about these days. You're so you can you mentioned that you do manufacturing and like you're a manufacturer engineer, and because of that, you're deemed an essential worker. So mm-hmm. I would like to know, like, how was that experience like for you to have to go w- out to work in a pandemic and to have to like commute and kind of like. Like, did it feel scary for you? How did you feel being in the office? And, like, how was it, like, having to work through this pandemic while, like, people were in different situations and were able to, like, stay home in quarantine? Mm-hmm. So, for me, um, also, this is, like, my first, like, like, this is my actual first job out of college, too. So, it's, like, everything is, like, different. And I remember here in California, they, in the news, like, they sent out, like, they sent out this alert, too. Like, this message to everyone is, like, this whole state is shut down. You know, and then I remember one of my coworkers texted me. He's like, hey, did you get this message from, you know, from from mayor or whatever, like one of those emergency response messages? And he was like, does that mean we have work? Like, do we not go to work? And immediately, like not even like 20 minutes later, I got two text messages from work and a phone call saying that they were still open, that we had to come in. So I was like, All right. I was like I'm going to go in regardless because I didn't even have my laptop. Like, I can't even do anything from home. So I have to go at least like to pick up my stuff. And then every day since then, I've been there. I've been, I work usually like sometimes six days a week, sometimes seven, you know? And because I work in like the factory part of it, it's like, I have to be there. I have to be on site. I have to, you know, I can do some things from home. Like I was working a little bit earlier, but for the most part, I have to be there. I have to move, you know, my products along and stuff like that. But at least for work, like they did take precautions. Like every day to this day, like we come in, 
Um, they scan our temperatures. If we need a mask, they provide us with a mask. Um, they give us hand sanitizer, and then they they did do the whole so, um six feet of social distancing. Like they rearranged the lab to make sure that the stations were kind of separated and things like that. For me, like the hardest part was just like the like because I'm Ubering to work, you know. So it's like like that does kind of like get to me. It's like all right, I get in, I don't touch anything, I make sure as soon as I get in, like I wash my hands, I do all you know, I do like I take my precautions, you know. Especially because I'm by myself. Like if I get sick, like I'm literally by myself. Like you know, that's that's scary, you know. But I think my job, my job has done like a pretty good. Um, they they've done pretty good, you know. No, that's good. Like I feel like. That, I feel like jobs that, like, are still people who are still, like, essential workers. Like, I know a couple of essential workers who are, like, still going into work and things like that. And, like, I've noticed that, like, jobs have been, like, accommodating in some aspects. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Ubering I get, because, like, I think, like, even for me, right, like, I just started to get over my anxiety about going on the subway because I was terrified. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I my God, I don't know what to do. Because the subway, okay, I'm not going to lie. The subway is as clean, the cleanest I've ever seen it in 26 <laughs> years. I, I've never seen the oh, subway God. so clean in my life. I was like, oh, but also, like, so empty, too, because, like, people aren't mm-hmm. using it. People are staying home. But my fear is, like, you know, when people do start going back to work, it's probably going to be crowded mm-hmm. as usual again. But anyway, like, yeah, no, it's, that's interesting to hear, like, because, it's it's just like people are always talking about like oh stay home stay home do this like it's okay just like don't go outside but I'm like no not everyone has the option to, yeah not, not everyone has the option to do that and like people mm-hmm. just don't get it like people are still going out there right? like people who are engineers and have to like do products that you know have mm-hmm. to be pushed out right people who are fast food workers um delivery workers people who work in food service mm-hmm. like you still got to work um so it's really difficult to like have to like, t- like people would police the like like the hell out of people like why are you outside why i'm like what you don't know why they're outside they probably are like commuting exactly. back and forth from work like can you not can you not be a karen for like 10 seconds and just like exactly and i'm like there's so many people there's so many people that lost their jobs too during this time and i'm like dude in my case it was like we went into overtime like you know like i was working like yeah. a hell of a lot of hours like, oh wow you know because of that i didn't get no hazard pay which would have been nice but you know like i i get the option that i do get paid my overtime and stuff like that so it's like that i am grateful for that i didn't lose my job that i'm able to go in like even if i do have to kind of like you know take the ubers and be there like and lucky i realized because like like my like one of my cousins like she's been in quarantine like she's told me the exact day like march whatever she's like she has not left the house she's been working you know like from home the whole time so that does kind of help with the whole like mental part aspect of it because you're not confined to your house you know i get to go out i do get to talk to some people that work even if it is like from a distance and things like that so that does help yeah, no, definitely. I, I know for me as an extrovert during quarantine, I've been like a mess because it's like, luckily I still live at home. Well, luckily, I mean, I still live at home. I don't want to say luckily, but I still live at home. So there are people around me, but like, I don't want to talk to my parents or my brother all day. You know what I mean? Like, I want to, I miss my friends. I miss going out. I miss seeing things. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what I mean? So it's like, you miss so much. Oh, oh so badly, dude. Oh. Every time my husband yeah. told me, I, I literally light up. She's like, oh, you're so happy. You, 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 you. I was like, it's because I'm talking to you guys. Like, legit, you guys are the highlight of my life right now. Like, you know? <laughs> Honestly, like, I feel like it's, there's no place like New York. People are always like, oh, May, would you ever want to move? Like, why don't you go explore the world? I'm like, listen. I don't need to explore the world. The world is New York. Like, that is my world. Like, I'm good. Like, I don't need... I mean, not to sound like I'm, like, closed-minded or whatever. No, like, I don't I mind do. traveling. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, if my I don't job was in New York, I would have never left. If there was a job for me in New York, I wouldn't have left. Exactly. I think that's what, like, most New York... And New Yorkers only leave when you have to absolutely leave. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like... Most of us, like, still stay here because it's like... There's nowhere like it. You know what I mean? I think that's, mm-hmm. like, and it's not even just, like, being in New York, but, like, the people from New York. Okay, I don't care what anyone says. People are like, oh, New Yorkers are so real, blah, blah, No, no, no. New Yorkers are the nicest yeah, people in friend. the and world. The they are the nicest people in the world. Like, New Yorkers will throw, like, will help you out. With, like, it's community-based. It's, like, people are so mm-hmm. real to your face. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like, for and us, it's, like, we'll stab mm-hmm. you in the front before we stab you in the back. So that's how we... That's yeah, and I'm like, dude, if they're being rude to you, it's fine because you're walking too slow in front of them because they need to yeah. get somewhere and you're taking other time. Like, other than that, like, they're going to be the nicest people to you. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, like, New York, there is, like, such a beauty in it. Like, and it, exactly, right? Like, just just have common sense and we're going to be fine. Like, we're, we're, we're going to get along. <laughs> um, and no, I could agree. Like, I, like, and New York misses you, Gio. Like, literally, like... <laughs> 
miss you here too. Uh, well, we're coming up on an hour, and I would just love to hear, like, before we close out, like, what, if you have any last thoughts that you want to say, anything that you want to promote, any products you're working on. I don't know, people throw like their Instagram handles, their projects that he like causes to donate to. And this is like your your time to like promote yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh I don't know. I don't really I don't really have any products or anything like that. I do just go to work and come home, um, other than that. Um, but I do wanna say thank you to you and you know, shout out to you for all the work that you're doing and all your episodes and stuff. Like I always love like how aware you are of like especially like social justice issues like i love that you're like so in tune with them and you're always putting up resources and things like that especially from like you know like we're both women of color but it's like we have an entirely different you know like um experience with that so like i love like hearing about you and you know like and thank you so much for like allowing me to come in and you know like share this especially because it's like one of the things that i that i did learn like that i didn't like when i was in college i found five ecuadorian women that were also in engineering you know, and that to me was like the biggest thing. And I was like, and then I would think back, I was like, you know, there's not, like, I don't know any, like, um, you know, Ecuadorian engineers, like, you know, growing up. Like, and, it, and dude, people say it all the time, like, representation matters. Like, it really freaking does, dude. I didn't even know engineering was like an option for me until my professor told me to, you know. And he was a male. You know, it wasn't even a woman that, that, that told me that. It was him. Yeah, so, no, so, I was you know, the same way. Platform. Are you serious? Like, of course, I wanted you to come on. And, like, I think, like, at the end of the day, right, like, you say you talk about representation. I think, like, by you being on here and talking about your experiences as an engineering like, student and, like, a woman of color, especially, like, a Latina woman, an Ecuadorian woman coming on, it's, like, whoever else may be watching this could be, like, oh, mm -hmm. I want to be just, like, Gio, right? Like, I want to, if she can do it, if she's <laughs> amazing, she's having a, a full-fledged career and she's doing the work, I can also do it, too. And I think that's, like, the purpose of, like, why I'm doing this because, you want to highlight the people in your community, right? You want to highlight, and community doesn't have to be, like, another Thai person, right? I mean, it could be, you know, your girls from college. It could be your girls from, like, the, the, the retail store you worked in. You could be, like, yeah. you know, like, all your friends from different places with these different diversities. So, like, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And, of course, like, it is an honor for, for you to even come on my show. I'm like, thank you. Like, I really appreciate <laughs> thank it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye, man. Take care.